there! Let's talk about structures of expressions. So right here I have an equation d equals a plus b over c. What we want to find is which variables are directly proportional and which are inversely proportional. So let's get started. First of all, directly proportional equations or expressions are normally expressed as y equals x. Now this is because as y increases, x also has to increase. Inversely proportional is when y and x do not exactly increase at the same time, so when y increases, x must decrease. So this would be represented as y equals 1 over x. So the reason why it's inversely proportional is because, let's say x equals 1. That means y equals 1 over 1, which is 1. So y equals 1, x equals 1. But then, when we have x equals 2, y would have to be 1 half. So y is decreasing and x is increasing. So let's apply this to this formula, this equation, if you will. So d equals a plus b over c. First of all, let's do directly proportional. And let's find which ones are directly proportional. And if we had to rewrite this so it would be more of an equation with no fractions, we would multiply both sides by c. So let's do that. So we would get cd equals a plus b. Now that we look at this, we can see that they're both proportional. c is proportional to a plus b. In another sense, we can look at all of CD is proportional to all of A plus B. So let's plug in some numbers. Let's say D is equal to 4. And we would have 4C equals, let's say A plus B equaled 4. And what we're trying to find here is if C and A plus B are directly proportional. So we would do 4C equals 4 which means c equals 1. So we can have our little chart here saying if c equals 1, then a plus b equals 4. So now that we know that a plus b equals 4 and c equals 1, let's try a different d. Let's say c equals 2 now. So if c equals 2, let's say c equals 2 in this equation. So if c equals 2, that means a plus b must equal 8, working backwards. And if c equals 2, a plus b equals 8. And these are all the examples we need to already figure out that as C increases, A plus B also increases. So this is directly proportional. Let's move on to inversely proportional. Let's pick D and C, and this A plus B can kind of represent this one in a sense. So let's say D, let's say A plus B is one. Let's use that example. So if we use D equals one over C, and let's give d a value of 2. We know d is 2, which means 2 equals uh, 1 over c, which means c would have to be 1 half. So in our little chart, we could say d equals 2 and c equals 1 half. Now let's make D decrease. So let's say D is now 1. So if D is 1, that means 1 equals 1 over C. So C would equal 1 as well. So in our little chart, 1 and C also equals 1. 
So here you can see there's a slight difference as this decreases, C increases. So that's the meaning of inversely proportional, as y decreases, x increases. And this gives us a little variety to when we're wanting to, let's say, compare a real-world example, such as how many miles you go compared to how much gas you use. So let's go and use this in a real-world example with a real equation. So these two equations are really used in AP Chemistry, if you have taken that. But the roots of these two questions are still structured in algebra. So let's learn how to take these expressions and find their relationship. We know it can be directly proportional or inversely proportional. There's only those two options. So you may not understand what these equations talk about, but the main important things you have to note are that this weird upside down y symbol, which is lambda, it's called the wavelength, and nu, which is a Greek letter for the 13th letter in the Greek alphabet, is frequency. So let's take these two equations and implement them into math. Find the relationship between wavelength, which is lambda, and frequency, nu. So we can do that by finding if it's directly proportional or inversely proportional. We can do that by rearranging them. We could also plug in the frequency into this formula, but first of all you want to write it out. And I would uh, divide lambda on both sides, so you would get nu equals c over lambda. And as you notice, this looks a lot like the actual formula for inversely proportional relationships. So this would actually be inversely proportional. That would be the relationship of this one. Inversely. Now for the next one, Find the relationship between wavelength and energy. So wavelength would be the lambda, and energy would be E. The problem is, lambda is not in the Planck's constant equation. So what we have to do is substitute a frequency as a form of lambda. So we can rewrite the light wave equation to be C equals lambda V. We can rewrite this divide on both sides, just like this, C divided by lambda. And now we can substitute frequency nu into this equation. So E equals H, and now we're substituting this for frequency, C over lambda. The relationship between wavelength and energy is just like the relationship between wavelength and frequency. So we can write this as also an inverse relationship. Another way we could have solved this is by thinking of the relationship between wavelength and frequency and the relationship between energy and frequency. And if you've seen this formula, as energy increases, the frequency also increases. And because we know the frequency and the wavelength are inversely related, therefore the wavelength and the energy is also inversely related. Thank you for watching Structures of Expressions. This is a really common thing in the SAT, and they use real-world applications to ask you about relationships between certain variables. Thanks for watching. This has been provided by SATFreePractice.com.